All right, welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Galaxy Today, coming to you from Galaxy Television, and we are looking at health on the show this morning. Just to let you know that you can be a part of this um, conversation. Uh, if you have a question or if you have comments to make on child health and immunization, you can do so by sending an SMS on the number that will be shown on the screen shortly, or you can interact with us via our various social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, using the hashtag Galaxy today. All right, uh, we will be kickstarting uh, the show from Lagos here, and we do have a guest. In the studio, of course, we have um, an alternative medical practitioner in person of Dr. Onyemaichi Uzu. Good morning, and welcome to Galaxy today. Good morning, thank you. Is it Good too morning, late to say Happy New Year? Yeah, no, it's not too late. We are still in uh, January. Okay, so you're looking at child health and um, immunization. Let's start with immunization. Why? Do you think a child should be immunized? Um, first and foremost, we have to understand that children represent um, uh, the future of every great nation. Okay. Therefore, it becomes a concern for every uh, society to ensure the child's um, health, growth, and development. Okay. And um, before I answer your question, I will first share the danger of not immunizing. Mm -hmm. Now, in, uh, in 2016, the World Health Organization report shows that uh, about 5.6 million children died between the age of 1 to 5. Mm -hmm. And uh, the records show that Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africans, were at risk, more risk than uh, other countries. That shows that immunization is very important. Mm. Now, if you look at the causes of this uh, death, uh, it could be traced to measles, chicken pox, um, mops, um, typhoid, I mean, sorry, malaria, and so on. So, uh, and the, the child or the children are vulnerable. Mm. Uh, and the children are vulnerable to malnutrition and infectious diseases mm. which can be effectively you know prevented mm. if ad adequate measure mm. is taken okay. so now comes to the question what is immunization immunization is a process you know whereby uh, a person is made immune mm. or is, is uh, resistant to infectious diseases and uh, this through the application of vaccines. Mm. And what are vaccines? Vaccines stimulate the body's own immune system, okay. you know, to, to fight all these diseases. Mm. So um, it becomes very, very important mm. that there should be great awareness about the importance of immunization mm -hmm. starting from newborn baby. And uh, I also have to, apart from immunization, it's also very, very important that um, adequate care should be taken mm -hmm. during um, antenatal, you know, and, uh, and also during childbirth and during postnatal. Okay. I know that it is through this pro during postnatal that also immunizations mm -hmm. are also involved. Mm -hmm. So I, I was impressed um, when I heard a report of what actually they did in uh, the campaign about um, massive uh, immunization mm. or vaccination in the um, northern northeastern part of Nigeria, mm. especially the troubled states, mm. where immunization were limited because mm. of security threats, mm. and about four million children mm. were immunized. Though I didn't follow the program, mm. but I'm sure that it took place. Mm. Something like that should happen to all the parts in Nigeria. Okay, but uh, still to just put in now, you are aware of what happened um, last year where uh, 
it was alleged that um, the military, you know, were vaccinating, you know, people in the South South with um, some sort of um, uh, monkeypox and um, yes. other um, mm -hmm. viruses and um, true vaccines, you know. So my issue right now is that of education and awareness level. A whole lot of people just see uh, this uh, public health aspect, uh, you know, come to them to like um, bring out your children for immunization. Yes. But most times they have their own myths and they have their own orientation and they feel that uh, their children are actually you know, placed in harm's way if they bring, out, um, bring them out um, to be uh, vaccinated. The danger of not immunizing your child mm. is more than you having the, the, the mindset that there is a, a, a plan uh, that uh, something else will be infected or injected to your child. Mm. So the most important is you have to look for where to gather the necessary information. Mm. You know, of course, you have your pediatrician who would keep track of the records mm -hmm. of your child immunization. Mm. So what happened? All you need to do is to go visit your health center, mm. uh, of course, where you have been taking your uh, po uh, postnatal. Antenatal. And yeah. I'm sorry, no, postnatal. Of when yeah. you uh, delivered. Yeah, after you delivered your postnatal, mm. you know, and they follow up the procedure. Mm. So um, I, don't, I don't see that as going to be a threat mm. because the threat of not doing the immunization is worse than what you are thinking. And also, I think it's also what we are now facing um, in the social media. Mm. Social media, you will just be hearing different hookup stories. Mm. Before you need to, somebody will just send a, a, a WhatsApp message to you telling you something like this is going on with no proof. Mm. So I think we need to go beyond just listening, but investigation. So independent investigation from the parents, uh, it, it, it's very essential. Okay, so how about the part where a whole lot of people have this mentality that in the days of our parents, there was not like immunization, there was not like vaccination. I mean, they, were not, they, they didn't have to be immunized and that they lived through. What yes. can you say, I mean, for people with that kind of mindset that feel if our parents could survive it, our children should be able to survive it as well? If you look at the track records mm. of medical improvement globally, mm. you will agree with me that the more supplicated invention medical wise is being taking place mm. the more different kind of sickness mm. are springing up mm. if not on daily basis on monthly basis on a yearly basis mm. because uh, the world we are living right now i can say wasn't the world that our parents live how mm. because you can see technology mm. pollution all these are just, um, I mean, increasing. And uh, so the, the threat to head is now rampant mm. compared to when our uh, forefathers or our grandma were living. For a good example, I, my mother never tasted frozen chicken. Mm. My mother never tasted refined uh, tomato. The one today you see tomato paste that's so half cooked mm. mm. that you just all you need to just to fix in and uh, mm. put your rice and start to eat. Now, so you can see that all these have as the consequences mm. because they have been preserved to prevent microorganisms. Mm. They mind you, all these also have side effects. Mm. So our parents rely mostly on natural foods mm. that and this natural food also is, is part of immune booster mm -hmm. that really supported their immune system very mm. well. And that is why these um, uh, sicknesses were not actually as rampant compared to the present day generation. So we okay. should not now be, we should not compare the life our parents live with the life we are living. Right now. It's totally different. Okay, now I, I, I see. Uh, yeah, thank God you've mentioned that. Uh, let me even just delve a bit into what you do because you're into alternative and medicine practice. Yes. Okay, still talking about what our parents did back in the day. Uh, they were using more of natural stuff. I don't know how, effi uh, how the efficacy uh, is or was, you know, then yes. and now. Because uh, back then, uh, they say there are some things that would really give to the children or to yes. a child, exactly. you know, that would um, help them um, fight some several diseases. But are yes. all of these things true? And what could this... Can you just give, an, give us an idea, really? Um, yes, let me first say that today, 
we should not get confused when we talk about natural substances. Okay. Mm. Today, you have seen so many products label natural substances, natural products, mm. natural products. I tell you, you need to go beyond what you're saying. Yeah. But those are not something natural. Mm. Now, when we talk about natural, we're talking about something use the way it was made by God. Mm. When you drink water, water is natural because the way God created water, that has been used. Mm. There's no, but the moment just human interference, it's no longer natural. It's no longer mm. natural. We need to get this right mm. because right now people are confused. They're seeing a lot of that people are saying it's natural. Now the body is made with organic substances, mm. and organic substances will help the body to fight these life-threatening sicknesses. Mm. So now our mothers, our parents, we are used to going to farm and get ugu, grow and prepare it. Go to Okro and prepare it. We are used to getting pounded yam. Today what we what has replaced pounded yam is pando yam. Mm. Today what has replaced um, the, the, the chicken they normally cut and, and, and cook is frozen chicken. Mm. But mind you, all things have to be because most of them are not actually even prepared here in Nigeria. Mm. Some are imported to this country. Mm -hmm. for, 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 for the life durability, the lifespan to prevent microorganisms, they need to inject other things with substances. Mm -hmm. And all these substances have consequences mm -hmm. to the human body. Yeah. So now, I'm not saying that we need to go back to nature, we need to go yeah. back to natural way because it's very, very important. Why is it important? It's because one, God created these things with some supernatural power. What I mean supernatural power, I mean by active ingredients. Mm. In, in, in this uh, uh, herbs. Okay. And by that one advantage in it is that when you take it, let me say you are taking Doguiaro from malaria. It will not only help malaria or fight uh, 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 the, the, the bacteria that causes malaria, you know, uh, plasmodium. It will go beyond treating your malaria to take off other challenges, health challenges, because of the bioactive ingredients in the in the help. This is one thing that the um, general public need to know and understand. Mm -hmm. And this is just a, a challenge because people will say, how come you, you mention only one plant? And you say, this plant can do this, do this, do this, do this. They need to understand that the plant, because of the activities of the plants, that is why it can remedy one to three kind of sicknesses. Mm -hmm. So we really need to go back to nature. But that is where the solution lies. Mm. I see. So you're saying that for child immunization and then more for child health, um, how about is the way? Is that what you're saying? Because I'm wondering how a child can be vaccinated the natural way. Now, let me tell you, the child's vaccination begins from the day the woman pronounced, I am pregnant. Okay. Or from the day that the, do the, the, the doctor confirmed, Madam, you are pregnant. Mm. It has to do with the food, the kind of food that you the eat. woman is going to eat. Mm. Now that is the time that a woman needs to reduce all this artificial food, refined food, and, mm. and eat more of, you know, cereals, uh, whole grain foods, you mm. know, fruits. Because you know that the woman is going to transfer part of her body immune system mm. to the day for the newborn baby. Mm. So that is where immunization begins. Now, when the child is born, there are other plants that are very, very good for children's uh, immunity. Mm. And, and, and one of them I don't play with is what we call sorghum bicolum. Mm. Sorghum bicolum, or you call it gynecon straw. Mm. It, it, it's, a, it's a very good immune booster. That you, as the baby from even day one, of course we are being uh, advised that the child, uh, the child needs uh, exclusivity in breastfeeding. Mm. You know, now during um, uh, baiting the child, mm. you you can give a drop, mm. a drop of this gynecon straw. Where mm. can they be found? Where, yes. where can they be found? Gynecon straw can be found in Nigerian market. We are blessed. Especially, I give kudos to the Southwest friends mm. who are in, the, in this um, 
practices, have alternative medicine, mm -hmm. and not only the uh, it's even the universities. Like most of my research, I did it in uh, uh, UI, mm -hmm. uh, University of Ibadan. Yes, the Department of Botany. So you can go to a market, the local market. You can mm -hmm. find them. Just you know because of the nature mm -hmm. of this practice, mm -hmm. most of these are hereditary. Mm -hmm. okay. Many of them did not go to school. Mm. So it be, it's one of one of the challenges. So okay. when you go to market and you now mention place I need uh, a gynecon straw, I need a sodium bicolum, which that's the botanical name. Local terms. Well, yeah. well, what is it? 